Sorry, <laughs> I know most of you viewers will not have even noticed that I was missing in the past few months. Maybe this is even the first video you ever watch on my channel. And if that is true, then hey, <laughs> welcome. You have no idea how much I love you being here. Let's be friends. <laughs> and even if someone did notice, the possibility of them being, well, whatever, is super high. So this goes out to a few friends who missed me on here. Sorry, I had a lot going on. I moved a couple times, finished one of my theses, and I'm actually actually about to move again but it's a bit less stressful now so I have the time and motivation and drive to get on YouTube again with the topic of pubic hair. <laughs> So here we are today talking about hair, pubic hair. In puberty at some point our hair down there starts growing and there are several questions surfacing for every single one of us. Is it ugly? Is it unhygienic? Why do I smell differently? Should I remove everything? What if I have sex with another person and they are disgusted by me? What is even the point? <laughs> Why? Well, when it comes to hair in general, humans are kind of odd in comparison to other animals. We have obviously lost most of the thickness and lusciousness of our body hair, except for a few spots. And then during puberty, a lot more appears that doesn't even seem to make sense. Like for example, armpit and pubic hair. However, the fact that it is there, although everything else has basically been evolved away, is indicator enough that it still has, or at least did, evolutionary speaking recently, serve some purpose. There are actually a few that have been examined in the scientific community. So here come five reasons why why pubic hair exists. Number one, reducing friction. So our genitalia and the skin on them is super sensitive. I mean, I think we would have a lot less fun if it wasn't, but no matter what we think, it is delicate and pubic hair actually forms a protective buffer around it, reducing friction during sex, for example. Some sources even refer to pubes as dry loop because it is easier to rub hair against other hair, against other hair, hair, <laughs> hair, <laughs> because it is easier to rub hair against other hair than rubbing skin against skin. Now I'm thinking of these horrible, humid, sweaty summer days where I, for some mysterious reason choose beauty over painlessness and decide to put on a dress and walk around holy friction this is so painful and then for days it will remind me of what an idiot I was but more than a friction buffer number two it might also be keeping our genitals warm which is super important during sex being cold on a surface on any point of our body not just down there causes the blood vessels to retract and this way less blood can flow into our genitalia this is of course super counterproductive when you're trying to have sex because everyone men and women and everyone in between need as much blood in their genitalia to have pleasurable sex. Number three, it protects our genitalia from external contamination. Just like eyelashes or nose hair, the pubic hair serves as a trap or filter of dirt and uninvited microorganisms like bacteria. Moreover, the follicles of the hair produce an oil which makes the environment less inviting for bacteria by preventing their production. Now, the fact that pubic hair appears in puberty, they were really creative with the words here, also indicates that number four, it is a physical sign of sexual maturity. And thus people with pubic hair have, or will have in a bit, or have had for the longest times of their lives, the ability to reproduce. Now, of course, nowadays, when you wanna have sex with someone, I sincerely hope you are sure that they wouldn't be too young to be sexually mature and in your age range, or at least legal, before seeing their pubes and also that you only see them with enthusiastic consent. Number five, pheromone excretion and scent preservation to attract sexual partners. Yes, you heard me right. There's this theory that pubes are basically scent carrying chemical secretion or pheromones, which are basically a signal to potential partners about compatibility. All of that obviously happens subconsciously and I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but yeah the pubic region has a lot of apocrine sweat glands that emit these pheromones and are thus increasing your attractiveness to a potential partner. Now, TMI, but for my part, I'm pretty gifted with hair. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been struggling with it because, well, it always seems to be too much, right? 
There seems to be no right way of removing it without having ingrown hair and infections afterwards. And still, it peeks out of your bikini bottoms and sexy undergarments. And imagine growing up in Greece at the beach, where basically all of your after school life is taking place at the beach in bikinis. Although I had laser removal on the side, that I can tell you I'm the happiest margarita ever since I did that. But as a teenager, when everything started growing and changing, I was pretty annoyed. And at some point, I felt like it was just just becoming too much. Can it be too much? How much pubic hair is too much? Well, hair growth, not only pubic hair, is so different from one person to the next. Pubic hair is connected with the body's secretion of sex-related hormones like testosterone. The more testosterone you have, the more hair grows. That's, for example, one of the reasons why males have more facial hair as well, because they have a higher testosterone level. Well, beards actually also have to do with the genes that code for the follicles. That's for another video. The other thing about pubic hair and puberty is that you start having sex at some point. And on top of every other insecurity accompanying your changing body, you now have also hair down there to worry about. You start smelling differently and think that this is a bad thing. Many people watch porn long before they start having sex themselves, and this leads to this distorted image of what we should look like down there. Also, this misconception of pubic hair being unhygienic is making the rounds and when you just don't know it better, you tend to freak out and try to adjust to everybody saying that you should be shaved clean down there as if no hair ever existed. Now, if this is your style and you feel more comfortable like that, then please go ahead and do that. But no, the pubic hair is in no way unhygienic and it is also okay to keep it groomed, trimmed, braided, shaven like little arrows pointing down for anybody should care about. I tried that once, you know, this downward arrow to be funny and stuff. Turns out I'm shit at shaving in shapes as well. It's your personal choice and you should do what you feel comfortable with and not let some weird fake image make you change your mind. Now you're gonna say, yeah, easier said than done, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. Being a teenager and having all these changes happening to your body and mind is fucking everything up. And yes, I also thought for the first few years after my sexual awakening that I could not possibly have sex with someone who might know that I grow hair down there as well. I guess you'll get through this, but rest assured that it is up to you, your preferences, your abilities, and your patience of how much grooming you're gonna do. 